Second secret of happy people is this. Happy people know how to be satisfied. Yeah, I know you're saying, Pastor, I thought you were going to tell us to give us secrets. This is a secret. It says right here in verse 12, I know that there's nothing better for men than to be happy and do good while they live. That everyone may eat and drink and find satisfaction. In all his toil, this is the gift of God. There we see the definition of happiness. Happiness is to find satisfaction. And one of the secrets about finding happiness, we can look at happy people, and happy people, they know how to be satisfied. When I say satisfied, I mean content. They know how to be able to be at peace. In other words, here's the technical term. They have established a reasonable threshold of satisfaction. Doesn't mean that they're not shooting for the best. Doesn't mean that they're not climbing the corporate ladder. Doesn't mean that they don't have great noble goals. They do. Dr. Alan Parducci, who's a behavioral psychologist on the faculty of UCLA, several years ago came up with an with interesting find after extensive research. He found out that happy people they have a lower threshold of satisfaction than unhappy people. What does that mean? Listen for a moment. Happy people and unhappy people, they have the same level of car accidents, same amount of divorces, same amount of financial challenges, same amount of medical sicknesses, same amount of difficulty with, with parenting and other issues like anybody else. They're ordinary people. Here's the difference why these individuals are happy and those, these over here are, are unhappy. Happy people, they are more easily satisfied than unhappy people. They have established a more reasonable threshold of satisfaction. Let me give you an example. Let's assume I'm a student. I'm aiming for an A in that course like the next guy. Here comes the, the final grade. I, I'm shocked I get a B. If I'm in the camp of being a happy person, here's what I'll reason, or here's how I'll reason my grade. I didn't get the A, but a B is not that bad after all, so I'm good. If I'm an unhappy person, I'm going to say, I didn't get an A, that professor, I'm going to sue the professor, I'm going to sue the school, I'm going to go after the school, I'm going to scratch their car, I'm going to cut their tires, I'm going to, look, they're going to change my grade, whatever, because I'm not good, and they're going to be messed up for months. They're going to go through Christmas break and, and Thanksgiving break and in the, in the, in the, in the bummers. Because why? Because they didn't get the A grade. Why? Their threshold of satisfaction was up here. And here's how when you look at threshold of satisfaction. Unhappy people, they think that to be happy, everything has to be perfect. The car has to be 100% perfect. The house has to be perfect. Families has to be perfect. Kids have to be perfect. You know, schools have to be perfect. Job has to be perfect. Church has to be perfect. Everything has to be perfect. All at the same time. Tax is perfect. Everything perfect. Every time. Can you imagine every single thing in your life being perfect at the same time all the time? You're setting yourself up for emotional letdown every time because of your definition of what is happiness and how to attain it. Unhappy people are people that... They look to happiness as a future objective whereby happy people recognize that happiness is a present reality. They're satisfied. Let me ask you the question. If nothing else changed in your life, you never got more money, you didn't get a bigger home, you didn't get a nicer car, your wife doesn't change, your husband doesn't change, your children never change, job never changes, nothing improved. Can you be satisfied right where you are? Let me give you yet another example. I'm single, and I hate being single. I want to get married. It's miserable and lonely. I want to get, a, I want to get married. So you find somebody, get married. Then you go in your closet. This person's a mess. They, they're taking half my closet. They, they you know, wear these blouses coming in, being mixed in my shirts. I had my shirts all color coordinated, the blue and the yellow and the pink and the white. And now it's all mixed in with blouses. Uh, this is a mess. I, I can't, I don't like this season. I wish we had kids and we would just be, wouldn't be focusing so much on each other. And all of a sudden the kids come. I 
God, these kids are messing with the diaper every few minutes. I got to change these diapers every couple of seconds. I'm changing diapers. I'm going to the shop right every minute. I might as well work there. I can't wait until I move out and get their potty trained and, and, and they become toddlers. And all of a sudden they become toddlers and they start learning gravity and they take the glass. And woo, push, and then they take the saucer. Push, right, and then they're pulling things off the coffee table. And, and I say, I, I, these kids drive me crazy. I can't wait. I can't enjoy these kids. I can't wait until they go off to school. They turn to be six years old. They go off to school. I'm waving at them at the bus saying, don't come back. Don't come back. And they, they go off to school. And, and then, then I find out when they come home have homework and I'm supposed to sit with them. I got to do homework math. I've looked at math in 30 years. I haven't written any essays in 30 years. Now I got to review homework. I hate that. I can't wait until they become more independent, become teenagers. Then they get teenagers. Hormones kick in. They start looking at me. They look down at me and talk with a deep voice. Hey, what do you want? What are you going to do? And, they, and I'm thinking, these are my kids. I'm going to have to kill one of them. And so here I am now. Then they ask me for the car. Hey, can I have the car? What car? Whose car? Then they're driving, and then, then I'm, I'm up at night worried. When are they coming home? It's, it's 12 at night with these kids. I can't even sleep because they're on the road. And so then I said, I can't wait until these kids go off to college. How do they go, go stay in the dorms, stay in the dorms? And they're, all, they're off to college, and I'm getting these big tuition bills. These tuition! I can't wait until the season changes. Can't wait until they graduate and get out of the home and get married. All of a sudden, here they are, wedding bells. You know, I... And, and, I, as a minister, an officiant at wedding, you should see when I say, who gives this, bra- this, this bride to be married? The father says, I do, and he runs out the back door as quickly as possible. I, in other words, I do, I give up all the bills, I give up everything, no more financial responsibilities. I do, and he's smiling, I do. And when he gets home, he and his wife, they look at each other and says, where the years go by, it's so quiet here. Here it is. They never learn to be satisfied in the season of life in which they're in. They're always desiring a future season, thinking that satisfaction and happiness is a future reality. Let me tell you, it's present reality. 